Right, well, I decided to come out of the uh, school gates and actually, like, kind of, like, make an entrance. I've been welcomed by the very lovely Sarah, um, head teacher here at Anderton Park School. And uh, she's agreed to t sort of talk to me about the reaction of having children uh, being pulled out of school by their parents. They didn't have... They don't buy, boycott the school themselves. They don't have the agency to do that because they are, you know, young children without that agency. They've been pulled out of school. Now, first of all, it's very sad that we don't have as many ch kids into, in school today uh, as we're used to. How, how has that been for you? Well, it's just really sad that some children haven't come to school today. Like you said, not because they don't want to, because um, some of their parents have decided not to bring them in or they've been terrified by people outside yeah. not to bring them in. We've had some reports of awful things being said to them mm. about you're taking your children to the white the white people or something. Mm -hmm, I mean, just shocking. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it's just awful. This school's amazing. And yeah. um, they've all missed out on a lovely English lesson, a maths lesson, playtime, PE lessons, or, you know, the normal stuff that happens on a Monday. Yeah. Um, so ironically, there wasn't any LGBTQI inclusive RSE today anyway. No, <laughs> we don't have any lessons on that anyway. So it's just yeah. like, you know, incidental over yeah, now and then yeah, when it yeah, comes yeah. up and we just talk about it in a very fair way. So, uh, I, you know, and I also want to thank you for, for coming and spending some of your time and, and, and speaking to people out there because, um, you know, this is a national debate. So it takes people from all over to talk about it. But you always talk about it very calmly. And I really thank you for that. It's very important. No, thank you for uh, welcoming me, actually, because I'm not from this community. I, um, I'm, I'm interested mainly because of the debate, the cause, really, um, because as a queer Muslim, my identity is politicised. It's it's um it's erased by the Muslim community. So to be queer and to be Muslim, it, that that identity is erased by Muslims. They say you can't be those two things. So first of all, it's erased. Uh, I think that happens for a lot of people, and they internalise that a lot of gay Muslims, so they won't come out and they won't speak. I've taken the decision to speak. So for me, it's really important to come here and just to really get an idea of what's going on on the ground, uh, because it's the children that are impacted. So thank you. I'm 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 really grateful that uh, you know you, you you believe that I'm I'm calm, but I'm actually quite angry. Mm. I'm actually quite angry. Yeah. We're we're very angry as well, yeah. um, because we've got a lot of very upset staff and parents and children, yeah. um, and we have we carry on as normal. That's what we have to do. It's our yeah, job, yeah. and also it's also our job to do this very small bit about equality. It's very small but very important. Nothing's changed here. We speak to parents all the time. We had three. Uh, workshops last week we've got another one today um, but you know people think they have a right to tell schools what to do they don't actually mm. they know they don't yeah. but they've been led to believe they kind of do by the DfE yeah so that's that that needs sorting out from the DfE's point of view but but the fact that some children have come in today is just it's just really awful yeah it is awful and uh, as you say it's not really up to parents to decide what's in the curriculum no. that's decided at a totally different level yeah uh, so it's, it's, it's really not up to the parents to decide that. If you believe in, for example, uh, creationism, you can't take your children out of a school class where they teach evolution. The children need to hear both sides and make up their own mind yeah. eventually. What I see going on right now is that these parents are homophobic and they want to get their homophobia in at an early age so that it sticks in their mind. And really what we're proposing is that you hear both sides. Okay, at home, they're gonna get their homophobia. In school, they're gonna get their equality and diversity training. They're gonna hear both sides and make their own mind up eventually. And that's the fairest way to do it. You know, you're not going into people's no. homes and telling them what to, to tell their kids there. So it, sh it really shouldn't be, um, you know, it, it really shouldn't be a problem. Yeah. And also, it's really important to understand that this is a few people. Mm -hmm. It's a handful of people. Last week, the protests were down to a handful of people. Uh, so it's not all parents at no. all. No, it's not the all parents. The vast majority of parents are absolutely fantastic. And, and yeah, they're Muslim. And they say, you know, in our religion, it's not okay for two men to get married. But, but you know, we're happy, really happy that the school is teaching them these aspects of equality because then they do get both sides. That's the vast majority of parents. In all, in, in Islam, it also says you have to respect the law of the land. And the law of the land here is that you can have a marriage between two yeah. men or two women. Yeah. And just, you know, just the same as a man and a woman. So you, you really have to respect the law, yeah. law of the land. And if you're going to raise children in this country, they need to know that as well. They need to be empowered. You can't just 
hide that information from them. Yeah, and that, that's what the Equality Act and the Public Sector Equality yeah. Duty is all about. It's great. It's a great law. So, and it's been there since two thousand and ten. So, there's nothing new ha yeah. happening, which is kind of slightly alarming as well. Nothing's changed. Yeah. Um, but this has been thrust upon us by two people who don't have any children in our school. Would it be fair to say that the protests have started to escalate into a slightly more intimidating way? Because I know that on Friday, um, whilst the protests have been quite small, as you say, they, on Friday, after Friday prayer, happened to include a lot of men um, from the yeah. mosque. Yeah, so um, the lead protesters went to, and they brought about 60 men. 60 men. Who blocked the road and outside a primary school on a Friday afternoon. I just... I mean, I mean, who does that? Who brings a whole army of men that are starving because they're fasting as well, so they're not exactly going to be in a good mood, to a primary school where the head teacher is trying to, you know, teach the kids and intimidate? That's just not on. Yeah. I think that's awful. really awful. And um, last night, you know, I, I, I believe that the LGBT community want to... Uh, show their solidarity to you and by doing that they want to put some flags up some love hearts on the school gates which i think is really cute now they're not going to come during the day when the protesters are uh, active because that's just going to escalate things so they came late at night last night on a sunday hopefully a nice quiet time to come and i mean do you mind sort of talking about what what happened last night there was a uh, banners put up by the lgbtq community um what happened after that well, I, I think what happened was, they, I think they were just putting some ribbons and nice things to make it a nice, welcoming place after all the eight weeks of hatred and nastiness. And, um, mm. and then some of the protesters turned up who don't live on this road and yeah, then yeah. were whipping up a frenzy. I, I wasn't here, but mm. this is what I've heard and I've seen and people have shown me some videos saying things like, this is coming into our community. Well, our community is all of us. Yeah, uh, so it's not to, just you. <laughs> no, to try and drive yeah. wedges between people is uh, is unforgivable. Yeah, um, and really, what's the future? I mean, is this sustainable? What they're doing? Could they? I mean, what what could what kind of ramifications? Aside from the fact that the kids are disadvantaged uh, and are not receiving the education that they should be yeah. receiving, what what kind of um, what can the the, the protesters expect? In terms of uh, you know like a punishment sort of thing, is there a legal is there a legal uh, pathway where they can be penalised? I think so. Yeah, I mean I'm meeting with the police in about five minutes, Great. Um, and we have been with the police the whole way through this, and uh, and also the council because the council have some powers and the police have some powers. So big meeting today about ways forward because we have some real nasty things happening, now. Mm -hmm. and um, yeah, British people have a right to protest peacefully, which they do, and that's that's a good thing currently, but also. The notion of the word peacefully is a very interesting one to look at because legally it means as long as you don't hurt anybody, mm -hmm. uh, damage property or threaten to kill somebody, I think. Yeah, so yeah, that's yeah. not really my definition of peaceful, but that's the yeah. legal definition okay. of peaceful. Yeah. So it's just looking into things like that exclusion zones, uh, which we're all looking into because the damage being done to everybody is immense. Mm -hmm. And um, mm. and, and, and inflicted upon us from people who have nothing to do with the school. Mm -hmm. So very sad. Well, I hope you're able to, do, to continue doing your good work. Thank you. And uh, can I just say, I take my hat off to you for doing doing your job in the, you know, in the circumstances that you really shouldn't have to deal with. Yeah. Really, the, it should be about the children's education and their, you know, their well well being, their empowerment. Yeah. Uh, because it, ultimately, you're here to empower the children, and what the parents are doing is disempowering them by taking information away from them. So I take my hat off to you. Thank you. Thank you for interview today. Thanks.